Now let's move on to verbs. Two things I want to tell before we begin verbs. Uh, I'm sure you all have heard that verbs are actually action words, right? Yes. We all have heard of this. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's that's not the only thing verbs do. Okay, verbs they actually tell us two things. It tells us about the action that a subject does. And it also tells us about state of being. So now, since you are moving to level two, let's let's make it more complicated. Okay, let's understand the complications of verbs. It's the most important thing in any language. All right, whichever language you learn, understanding and grasping the concept of verbs is, let's say, much more important than understanding subject and object. All right, because verbs. Tell us li literally every detail we need to know about what's happening. So when I say action, we know running, sleeping, eating, whatever. But when I say state of being, what do I really mean? When I say state of being, I'm saying that as any action is happening, the subject exists. You know, like when someone is sleeping, the subject is, is, is existing. When someone is teaching, the subject exists. And a whole set of verbs, which are called auxiliaries or helping verbs. I'm sure you have heard this. The whole set of helping verbs are nothing but they represent the idea of state of being. Like, for example, uh, if I say I uh, am, is this sentence correct? Is this a sentence, first of all? No, ma'am. No, okay. ma'am. Everyone is saying no? No. Can you repeat the sentence? The, the sentence is I am. No, not, not. That does not even make a sense. <laughs> it is a sentence. Okay. What? Okay, let's yeah, let's get into the fun part. Okay. I am is actually a full sentence because according to the rules, all we need to make a full sentence is a subject and a predicate, right? Yes, ma'am. Now, predicate says that it has option of having object. You know, objects are optional in a sentence. It's not compulsory to have an object at all points of time, right? I eat is a full sentence. Why? Because it has a verb, the verb am, and it has a subject. And this verb, this sentence I am means that a person exists. Okay. And this and here is the action that's that's actually state of being that the person exists. Do we understand? Are we all mind blown? I mean, at least when I was told, I was like, wow, that's so crazy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so so if you know there is this uh, verb you have heard of be, right? Yes, please. Yes, yes. B means yes, exist. Yeah, B simply means to exist. Okay. And just like uh, we have words like dance and sing, and it has different forms, right? Like uh, dance, danced, danced. Similarly, B has different forms. And the conjugation of the verb B, conjugation means understanding different forms of V, of B, uh, they form this set of verbs called auxiliary verbs. For example, is, am, are, was, were, has, have, had. All of these are nothing but conjugation of the verb be. And all of these, they simply mean the same thing, that the person or the, or the subject exists. But as we conjugate, what's the purpose of having so many of them? Like, why can't we have just one? Like, you know, I be, I be, everywhere be. We have so many forms because we want to understand in which time this person exists. Like, when I say uh, I was, I mean in the past. I am means I am in the present. I will be, will be my future right so for, here comes this is a relation between verbs and tenses it's not just having action or doing or performing action it's also about understanding how much action has been performed that is status of the action and what is the time when action has been performed 
Fair enough? Yes, Pam. Okay. Uh, I, I think we can uh, we can stop here uh, with, with this crazy thought. I want you all to think about it uh, today. My mind is currently blown away. I can't think anything. 